Good evening, ICF Church family, and welcome to our Wednesday evening midweek word devotion. I want to let you know that I'm praying for you, and I'm thankful for our engagement online and for all the opportunities that we have at this time. And I'm thankful for so many of you who have stepped up to lead Bible studies and host team meetings and we're doing a great job as a church family of staying connected at this time. And I just want to encourage you with that. I also want to remind you about each of our connections, our weekly engagements online. You'll remember that on Tuesdays, our ladies meet at 445 for Bible study over Zoom. And Elena Henderson hosts that. On Wednesdays at 8 a.m., our, our men's group meets for Bible study at uh, 8 a.m. Honduras time. And Mike Miller leads that. And then on Fridays at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube, we have our, our children's time. And those are uh, have a craft to do. And, and I know that the children have been enjoying those. And then, of course, on Sundays and Wednesdays, we have our worship service and devotion time here. Additionally, this Friday, our youth are going to meet over for an interactive Bible study over Zoom. Lena Quigney, our youth leader, is going to be leading that. And if you need the link for that, and if you don't have the information for that already, if you'll just leave a comment here in the um, uh, comments here, or shoot me an email or a text, we'll be glad to get you that information. So uh, just a reminder about the ways that we are engaging during this time, during this kind of really strange time. I want to share one of my favorite memory verses with you tonight, and this is a verse that we have uh, at ICF. We've studied before. We've actually done a series on Sunday mornings, and this verse is Psalm 126, 6. Psalm 126, 6 says, He who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy bringing his sheaves with him. This psalm is a beautiful Hebrew poem that reminded God's people that they had been in captivity. It reminded them that through that captivity, through that time, that uncomfortable time of sorrow, that if they stayed faithful, and as they stayed faithful, there was another side. There was, a, there was an end and a time past that time of difficulty and sorrow. The children of Israel, went in, when they went into captivity, they got thrown out of their routine. They got taken completely out of their comfort zone. And they were especially had their uh, rhythm of worship disrupted. But this psalm reminded God's people that if they stayed faithful and as they stayed faithful through that time, there was joy on the other side. There was a time of harvest on the other side. And that growth sometimes comes through difficulty and sometimes is invisible, but growth yields a harvest. Now we haven't been taken into captivity by a political en enemy, but we have been quarantined we have been displaced, many of us. All of us, to some degree or another, have been confined and our rhythm of life has been completely thrown off. Our rhythm of times of worship together have been disrupted. And through all this time, one thing is for sure, things have changed and continue to change. And I don't know about you, but the longer this time goes, it, the more uncomfortable it seems to get. Not so much in, in physical pain necessarily. Praise the Lord, most of us have, have found ourselves with our daily bread and for that we give thanks to the Lord. But just the different life and different routine tends to wear. I believe God has a message for us during this time through this same pattern of Psalm 126, 6 is that if we keep faithfully sowing seed, there's a harvest on the other end. But what is that seed or, or what are those pieces of seed? I believe that one is that we don't give in to fear or panic. It can be so easy during this time for our minds to, to race. 
and for us to get in despair, even depressed, or maybe even to give our minds over to some temptations and some things that make us feel a little better for a little while or numb us, but their end is death. I just want to encourage you. I believe God is saying to us, stay faithful. Don't panic. Don't don't sow those seeds of despair or sowing to our flesh, but instead sow prayers of thankfulness. So prayers of seeking God's will and asking God to fight, to work, to, to be on our behalf. We can also sow prayers of love for each other and prayers for the lost and prayers for the state of the world. We can give our cares to God through prayer. I believe those are some seeds that God is asking us or leading us to sow during this time. Another seed that we can sow during this time is encouragement to one another. As we connect with one another, just to give a kind word of encouragement, to let each other know that we're praying for each other. I'm thankful that our church is doing that, that so many of you are reaching out to each other, not only through our online engagements each week, but over the telephone and over text to reach out to each other, to bear one another's burdens and to listen to each other. I believe another seed that we can sow during this time are good works to those in need. Let's look for opportunities and continue to use the resources and, and the blessings that we've been given to give to those in need, to continue to help those who are hungry or those who don't have as much. And I believe another very important seed that we can sow during this time is the gospel message, the gospel hope to the hopeless. Many around us are hopeless because they don't know the peace of God that we know inside of us because they don't have a relationship with the Savior and we can sow those good seeds of God's word, of God's love, of the saving knowledge of Christ. Let's sow those seeds. Let, let's continue to sow those seeds. And if we do, and as we do, we can count on a harvest. But what that might that harvest be? What that might that harvest look like on the other side of, of all of this? To be honest, we don't know. But I believe that the, the, the full counsel of Scripture and the character of God and our own experiences of following God and the witness of the Holy Spirit in our heart tells us that as we're faithful during this time, that on the other side, one of the harvests will be rest for our soul. God will challenge us. He will stretch us. He will draw us closer to Him. And He will give us rest at the right time. Rest for our souls. And we can have rest during this time. But I believe beyond this, as we're faithful to sow seeds, God's going to give us a harvest of rest. I also believe that there'll be a harvest of glory to God. Beyond all of this, as we stay faithful, our lives will point others to Christ and our peace and our heart and our contentment that we have even, even through all this time will give glory to God. Our answered prayers and those that we have seen come to Christ, those that we have seen healed during this time, those that we have seen God work really amazing things in life through circumstances and amazing provision, those will all give glory to God. And that is always a wonderful harvest. The harvest of glory to God always then fosters joy in our souls, in our minds, in our spirits, and that joy is evident to others. And indeed, as we are faithful to stay the course and sow these seeds, God will no doubt bring people to Him. God will no doubt draw souls to Him. Let's continue to pray for the lost. Let's continue to share a good word with those who need to hear the hope of Jesus. As we spend just a few moments in prayer, I'm praying for, for myself, my family, for you, for our entire church family, 
for all Christians that we'll be faithful to sow seeds and that we'll enjoy the harvest on the other side of all this. And that through all the changes that we are experiencing, we will experience also and realize the abiding, unpresent, unchanging presence of God in our hearts and lives because He is with us always. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He is always there and true to His people. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You for this time together, this evening, to gather together in this way. And Lord, we just pray that You will give us the faith that you say is a gift from you and the strength which we know comes from you and the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts to be faithful through this time. Lord, we ask you that we will see your power and your miracles through all of this. Lord, that as we faithfully sow these seeds, Lord, that you do a mighty work in the world. We pray that the lost will come to know you. We pray that the sick will be healed. We pray that, Lord, the hungry will be fed. And Lord, we pray that you will empower us and use us to do those things. Lord, we pray that your gospel message will go throughout the world. And Lord, we pray for the, that we will see the harvest on the other side. Lord, as the world changes, as our lives move forward, God, we ask you that we'll realize your presence, your unchanging, undying presence in our lives forever. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. Thank you for your peace that passes understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Love, prayers, blessings to you all. In Jesus' name.